Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide-open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson, both on mutual over most of these stations. Duncan Grant, the owner of the Pacific Trading Company in San Francisco, had just called his son Eric into his office. Eric, I have a job for you, a big job. What is it, Dad? As you know, I've had my eye on the Yukon fur trade for some time. Now that the gold rush has stimulated the development of that region, I believe the Yukon territory is going to become one of the richest sources of furs on the continent. It certainly looks that way. Earlier this year, I sent one of my agents up there... A man named Raymond Buckner. I believe you're acquainted with him, aren't you? Oh, sure. I know Ray Buckner. Well, Buckner's job was to scout out the situation. Send me a report on all the independent trading posts in the territory. What was the purpose of that? There's going to be plenty of competition for the fur trade. If we expect to get our share of it, we've got to move fast. That means we can't wait to establish our own chain of trading posts. You mean you're thinking of buying out the independent trading posts? Either buying them out... Or else making contracts with them for the exclusive marketing of their output. I see. But where do I come in on all this? Well, son, I told you I had a big job for him. I'm sending you up to the Yukon Territory as official representative of the company to make the necessary deals with the independent trading posts. Well, this is the biggest assignment you've ever given me, Dad. Yes, but I'm sure you can handle it. How soon do you want me to leave? Tomorrow morning. Your tickets are already bought. You'll sail for Alaska on the Northern Venture and transfer at St. Michael to a river steamer called the Yukon Star. All right. I've already written to Ray Buckner. He'll come aboard at 40 Mile. That's a town just over the border from Alaska and travel the rest of the way with you to Dawson City. Okay, Dad, I'll start packing right away. Days later, in Dawson City, two men met in the back office of the Red Dog Cafe. One was the owner of the cafe, a burly, cold-eyed man named Gerald Ballard, who had risen by ruthless methods to a position of wealth and influence in the Yukon Territory. His visitor was the trading company agent, Raymond Buckner. Gerald Ballard spoke. Well, Buckner, what do you want to see me about? I have news for you, Ballard. Go ahead, spill it. I received a letter this morning from the home office in San Francisco. The company's getting ready to move into this territory. How are they going about it? The owner's son is coming up here. He's a young fellow named Eric Grant. His orders are to either buy out the independent trading posts or else to make contracts with them for exclusive marketing of their furs. Oh, so that's it. Well, I suppose you realize that if young Grant carries out those orders, you'll be facing some dangerous competition. Look, Buckner, 
I've told you before that I intend to get control of the Yukon fur trade. That statement still goes. Well, you'll have to figure out some way to stop the company from taking over all those trading posts. I think that can be arranged. The Pacific Trading Company is no fly-by-night outfit, Ballard. It'll take plenty of money to outbid them. Yeah. Maybe there's an easier way. What do you mean? Suppose something were to happen to young Grant. You mean murder? What's the matter? Does the word scare you? No, no, but a hemp rope does. Besides, killing Grant won't stop the company permanently. It'll give me time enough to take over those trading posts on my own terms and organize my own setup. Even so, murder's a risky proposition. Don't worry. Your neck won't be in any danger. I can get one of my boys to handle the job. That is, if you're willing to set things up for him. Oh, I might be. What's your offer? 5000 cash right now. Later on, when my own fur trading company is organized, I'll need an experienced man to manage it for me. Meaning I'll get the job? That's right. Ballard, you just made yourself a deal. What is it you want me to do? How soon is young Grant arriving? He's on his way right now on board the Yukon Star. I'm to go aboard at 40 Mile and travel back here with him. Mm-hmm. Come over and take a look at this map on the wall. A few miles north of here, there's a cliff that juts out into the river. It's called Rocky Point. Yeah, I know where it is. Now you'll notice on the map that the river narrows right at that point. So? If someone with a rifle were posted on that cliff, it wouldn't be hard to drill a man standing at the rail of the Yukon Star. Yeah. But how do you know young Grant will be standing at the rail when the ship passes Rocky Point? That's where you come in. <laughs> you mean you want me to lure him into position? That's right. You can be pointing out the scenery to him or anything like that. Get him up in the bow where there won't be any other passengers crowding around you. My man on the cliff will do the rest. The following week, when the Yukon Star arrived at 40 Mile, Eric Grant came out on deck to scan the faces of the people waiting at the landing. He found himself standing side by side with two tall, red-coated Mounties who had come aboard at Circle City, Alaska. That's a mighty fine dog you have there, Mounty. Oh, thanks. He never leaves your side, does he? No, we're pals, aren't we, King? I've been noticing him ever since you first came aboard. Oh, by the way, my name's Eric Grant. Glad to know you. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. This is our Constable Alexander Ross. How do you do? Glad to know you, Grant. I didn't know you Mounties ever operated across the border in Alaska. We don't. It so happens that we escorted some criminals to the American authorities at Circle City. Now we're on our way back to Dawson. Sounds like exciting work. Are you on your way to Dawson, too? That's right. But I'm expecting someone to meet me here at 40 Mile. He's going to come aboard and travel the rest of the way with me to Dawson. He should be somewhere on the dock right now. I... There he is. Hey, Ray! Yeah. Hello there, Ray! A short time later, when the gang flag had been lowered, Ray Buckner rushed aboard and greeted Eric warmly. So you finally got here, Eric. How are you, boy? Fine and tandy, Ray. Your father has entrusted you with a mighty big assignment. Don't I know it. I just hope I can handle it successfully. Oh, don't worry about that. You'll make out all right. I'm particularly anxious to make good on this assignment because if I do, Dad's promised me a raise, which means I'll be able to get married. Get married? Well, congratulations. I don't need to ask if she's beautiful. <laughs> well, it just so happens I have a picture of her right here in my pocket. Here, I'll let you judge for yourself. Hey, this girl really is beautiful. And this picture is quite a work of art in itself. Yes, it's a miniature she had painted for me right after we were engaged. Well, with that as a good luck charm, I don't see how you can fail to make good. <laughs> well, maybe you're right at that. Good weather prevailed. And to every person on board except one... It appeared that the trip to Dawson City would be completed uneventfully. When the ship approached Rocky Point, Sergeant Preston was standing in the wheelhouse, talking with Captain Corey, the master of the Yukon Star. Well, it won't be long now, eh, Captain? That's right, Sergeant. Just a few more miles, and I'll have you back in Dawson City. Oh, Dad rat it all. What's the matter? A couple of passengers up there in the bow. Is that out of bounds? It is for anyone outside the crew. A passenger gets up there among the anchor chain and winches. He's apt to break his neck. What? Great, jumping Jupiter. One of them's been shot. Yes, it came from the cliff over there. Reverse the engine. Let's get down there and see if he's still alive. All right. Out of the way. Please, please. Don't crowd around here. Back. Coming through, please. Go on. Get back out of the way, all of you. Holy smoke, it's young Eric Grant. Yes, so I see. Someone shot him while we were standing here at the rail. Tell me if he's still alive. Yes, his pulse is still beating. Dr. McCone came aboard at 40 Mile, didn't he, Captain? Yeah, that's right. I'll send someone to get him. Oh, here he comes now. 
carnation's going on here? This man's been shot, Doctor. He's better take over. All right, Sergeant. Let's have a look at him. How did the ship start, Captain? How about lowering a boat? Sure, right away. Think you can catch the person who fired the shot? No telling. At least it won't hurt to look around. All right, back to We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See the wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue, Sergeant and Constable Ross went ashore in a small boat. And after paddling around the point, they finally found a place where the cliff was not too steep and offered enough rocky footholds for them to scale up to the top. Then they scouted around and made a thorough examination of the spot where the gunman had lain in wait. When they returned to the ship, they were confronted by the captain and a crowd of passengers eager for information. Among the latter was Ray Buckner. What did you find out, Sergeant? Not much, Captain. The man who fired the shot was alone. He had a horse tethered in a grove of trees. I suppose that means he made a clean getaway. Well, a temporary getaway, at least. Well, what do you mean by that? As soon as we arrive in Dawson, I intend to ride back here and try to pick up his trail. By the way, uh, you mind telling me your name? Of course not. It's Ray Buckner. You're the man who joined Eric Grant at 40 Mile? That's right. What's his business in the Yukon Territory? Why, his father's the owner of the Pacific Trading Company. Huh? The company is planning to enter the Yukon fur trade, so Eric was sent up here to either buy or make contracts with a very independent trading post. Any idea why someone might want to kill him? Oh, no, no idea at all. Why should anyone want to kill a complete stranger? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Surely the bullet wasn't meant for him in particular. Must have been some drunken sourdough or Indian just shooting at random. It's possible. The doctor finished with him yet, Captain? Not yet, Sergeant. We carried him to his cabin, and the doc is still in there working on him. Come on, Alex. Go back and see how he's making out. Right, Doctor. They found Dr. McComb just emerging from the cabin to which Eric had been carried. How is he, Doctor? Yeah, he's in fine shape, Sergeant. I've extracted the bullet. Fortunately, it didn't go very deep. Well, he was hit squarely in the chest. It's a miracle the shot wasn't fatal. Miracle is the word for it. What saved his life was a miniature portrait in a metal case. Oh? He was carrying it in his breast pocket, and it slowed down the bullet. Is he strong enough to talk? No, he's still unconscious, Sergeant. Doubt if he'll come to for some time. He'll have to be taken to the hospital as soon as we land in Dawson. All right. If you'll help me carry him, Buckner, we can fix up some kind of stretcher. Sure, Sergeant. Good idea. As the two Mounties walked away from the cabin, Sergeant Preston remarked to Constable Ross. Alex, I want you to do something for me. Name it, Sergeant. When we arrive in Dawson, I want you to wait around outside the hospital until Buckner leaves, then trail him and find out where he goes. All right. But uh, what's the idea? Do you think Buckner had something to do with the shooting? He must have. If the shot was deliberately intended to murder Eric Grant, the setup was too perfect to be accidental. Yes. Two men standing alone at the rail in the ship's bow. Uh huh. Where do you think Buckner will go after he leaves the hospital? If he did help plan this shooting, he'll want to report to his Confederates. And so we'll find out who they are. When the ship docked at Dawson, Sergeant Preston and Ray Buckner carried the wounded man to the hospital. From there, Buckner went to his hotel, and then to the Red Dog Cafe. Gerald Ballard and his gunman, Trigger Durham, were waiting in the back office. Ballard greeted him impatiently. Well, Buckner, what happened? No dice. Grant's still alive. Still alive? What's the big idea, Trigger? I thought you told me you killed him. I told you I plugged the man standing at the rail with Buckner, and I did. Sure, but Grant was carrying a metal picture case in his pocket. That saved his life. Of all the luck. That's not the only bad luck, either. What do you mean? It so happens that two Mounties were on board the Yukon Star. One of them is a gent named Sergeant Preston. Grant! 
What's the matter? Well, that guy Preston is the smartest Mountie on the force. He's plum poison. You better watch out, then. He's planning to ride back to Rocky Point and try to pick up your trail. Holy mackerel. That dog of his will be able to follow my scent, boss. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking to myself. We better take care of that red coat right now. What do you mean? I mean we won't wait for Preston to trail you back here to the cafe. Take Slim along with you and ride after Preston. And make sure he doesn't get back to town. Meanwhile, Constable Ross was reporting back to Sergeant Preston at Mounted Police Headquarters. I followed Buckner as you told me to, Sergeant. Where'd he go? First he went back to his hotel, then he went to the Red Dog Cafe. I looked in through the window and saw him going back into Gerald Ballard's private office. Gerald Ballard, eh? You think he may be the one that Buckner's working with? Working for, more likely, Ballard's crooked. He controls a number of enterprises. Just recently, I heard a rumor he was moving into the fur trade. Sergeant, are you going to haul Ballard in for questioning? No, before we make any moves in that direction, we'd better go back to Rocky Point, see if we can pick up the trail of the man who shot Eric Grant. Good idea. All right, Alex, let's saddle up and get going. Come on, King. The long Arctic summer day was drawing to a close, and the sky was sullen with gathering thunderclouds as the two Mounties headed north along the trail leading out of Dawson City. By the time they arrived at Rocky Point, darkness had fallen and the storm had burst in full force. Oh, 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 oh. Good thing you brought that lantern along, eh, Sergeant. All right. We may need more than a lantern to pick up the trail in this storm. Sergeant lit the lantern and then led King to the spot where the gunman had lain in wait to kill Eric Grant. The great dog sniffed around carefully. And although he was able to pick up faint traces of scent, he couldn't follow it more than a short distance from the point where the gunman had tethered his horse. No use, Alex. Rain's washed out the scent. That gunman sure playing in luck. Uh, what's the matter with you, kid? Get down behind those boulders, Alex. <laughs> the first shot had smashed the lantern which the sergeant was carrying. But the Mounties had dropped behind the boulders before any more of the bullets could take effect. King must have heard them before they started firing. Yes, I thought that growl meant trouble. All right, Alex, let's give it back to them. The shots were coming from a screen of trees which fringed the edge of the cliff. The Mounties fired back at the flashes. Finally, one of their shots was followed by a distant scream. They got one that time, Alex. Yes, it sounds as though he toppled off the cliff. The other one stopped firing. I bet he's clearing out. Maybe a trick to draw us into the open. The Mounties waited tensely, but there were no more shots. And finally, the sergeant decided it would be safe to investigate. Advancing cautiously among the trees, they located the spot from which the crooks had been firing. If they were mounted, they must have left their horses somewhere back down the trail. Unfortunately, it's too dark to read sign without a lantern. You suppose the man I shot really did fall off the cliff? Let's go down and take a look. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. After skirting the cliff to a location where they could clamber down more easily, the Mounties made their way back along the base of the cliff to a point directly underneath the spot where the crooks had been hiding. Sure enough, they found the body of a man sprawled among the jagged rocks. By the light of a cupped match, they scrutinized his face. Say, I I know this man, Sergeant. They call him Slim. Yes, one of Gerald Ballard's hired hands. This proves Ballard's behind the whole deal. Not the sort of proof that'll stand up in court. Well, at least you can hold him for questioning. I think I have a better plan, Alex. If we can get the clerk at Buckner's Hotel to help us. What do you have in mind? Now, first we'll take this man's body back to town, and here's what we'll do. We'll get the hotel... Clerk. 
It was nearing midnight when the clerk from Ray Buckner's hotel came to the Red Dog Cafe and delivered a letter to Gerald Ballard. Hey, what's up, boss? A letter from Buckner. Hotel clerk just brought it over. Let's see what it says. Oh, wait till I get it open, will you? Ballard, I've just had a visit from the Mounties. Something has gone wrong. They suspect that I helped arrange the shooting of Aaron Grant. And I think they also suspect that you were mixed up in the deal. I've got to talk to you, but I don't dare come to the cafe. So meet me as soon as possible in that open shed at the steamboat landing. Don't let me down or I'll talk and talk plenty. Signed, Buckner. Holy mackerel, that sounds like the Mounties are really getting wise. Yeah, and it also sounds like Buckner's getting cold feet. You gonna meet him like he says? Sure, I'll meet him. And I think you better come with me. Well, why so? If Buckner show a sign of turning yellow on us, we better get rid of him. Otherwise, he may wind up squealing to the Mounties. Now, come on, let's go. A short time later, Ray Buckner was awakened by someone knocking on the door of his hotel room. After getting out of bed and lighting the lamp, he opened the door. Uh, Sergeant Preston, what's up? I've come to ask you a favor. A favor? Yes. Needless to say, you're as anxious as I am to catch the person who shot Eric Grant. Of course, of course. With your help, I may be able to do just that. I'll be glad to help. What do you want me to do? I'd like you to pretend that you're under arrest and come with me to the steamboat landing wearing handcuffs. What's the idea? Well, frankly, I'd rather not say just now. My plan may not work. But can't you at least give me some idea what you're up to? Well, put it this way. If the man I'm after thinks you've been arrested for the shooting, it'll put him off guard and help me capture him. Oh, so that's it. You're willing to do it? Why, why sure. Naturally, I want to help any way I can. All right. There's no time to waste. Get your clothes on. Let's get going. Meanwhile, Ballard and Trigger Durham had already gone to the steamboat landing and were waiting just inside the shed. The rain had ceased. Finally, the two figures appeared in the glow of light cast by the lanterns on board the Yukon Star, which was moored farther down the landing. Wait a minute. Here come two guys now. There's a dog with them. Hey, that one guy's a red coat. Holy mackerel, and the other one's Buckner. And he's wearing handcuffs. Why, that dirty rat. He must have squealed on us. He's told the monk you were here to meet him. Yeah, that's what he's done, all right. Suppose they've seen us yet? No, oh, no. We're in the shadow here in the shed. Wait a minute. Now they're stopping. Looks like the monk is going to leave Buckner behind. Yeah, he's leaving the dog to guard him. Coming here by himself. Should I gun him down? No, no. They hear the shot on board that riverboat. We got to do something. Buckner spilled the beans at that monk. You were in the spot. Keep your shirt on. They don't know there's two of us here. When the Mountie gets a little closer, I'll step out to meet him. You stay back in the shed and keep him covered. Right. A moment later, as Sergeant Preston approached the shed, Gerald Ballard stepped forward into view. So you kept your appointment with Buckner, eh, Ballard? Well, what about it? I'm placing you under arrest in the name of the Crown. Guess again, Preston. Stop that gun, Monty. What? <laughs> Didn't know I had someone covering you from the shed, did you? The same man who tried to kill me earlier this evening at Rocky Point, I suppose. That's right. And the same man who tried to kill Eric Grant. Only this time, he's going to do a little better job. Come on out and meet the Sergeant Trigger. Sure. Well, well, if it isn't Trigger Durham. You're mighty cool, aren't you, Preston? Because what do you think you're going to do now, Ballard? I'm going to have Trigger put a bullet in you. And another one in that double-crossing rat Buckner. Not here, of course. Some place where the shots won't be heard. But one thing I'd like to know, just out of curiosity. What's that? Why did you want Eric Grant killed? Oh, didn't Buckner tell you? I'm going to get control of the fur trade in this territory. I don't want Grant's company getting in my way. Oh, thanks for the information. All right, Alex. Reach, brother. Hey, what the... Hey, another Mountie. I'll get him. No, you don't. No! As Trigger oh. dropped his gun and clutched his arm in pain, Ballard lunged at Preston. You won't take me, Preston! Grabbing the sergeant, he tried to swing him around to use as a shield. But Preston knocked him loose with a jarring right no. to the face. Why, you... Ballard recovered and lunged back into the frame with a wild glint in his eyes. He was a big, thickly-muscled man, fully as tall as Preston, and he fought with a cold, desperate fury. His heavy fist rained blows at the Mountie, but only half of them landed, whereas every one of Sergeant Preston's punches found its mark with telling effect. Finally, the sergeant drove a terrific right to Ballard's jaw that sent the crook sprawling weakly on the wall. Had enough, Ballard? Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm left. Then get up on your feet. You and Durham are under arrest in the name of the Crown. I thunder you wouldn't have caught up with us if it hadn't have been for that squealing rat, Buckner. Buckner didn't give the game away, you did. What? I was the one who sent you that note. And I tricked Buckner into coming here to make you think he'd confessed. Holy mackerel, you. So that's how this other redcoat happened to show up so conveniently. That's right. The constable's been hiding behind those bales ever since you first came to the shed. Now that you've confessed, you, Durham, and Buckner will pay the penalty for your crimes. 
which means that this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There are lots of ways to save money. You still hear about people tucking it away under mattresses, putting it away in a favorite piggy bank or a cookie jar. But there's a much better way to save, and that's by buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. It's the real easy way of saving money. Your employer automatically sets aside a certain sum of money each payday, any amount you name. It's all done before you get your pay, so in that way you never miss it. When enough is accumulated, you receive a Series E savings bond, automatically too. There's no bookkeeping or budgeting problems for you. It's also the smart way of saving. Series E savings bonds pay back $4 for every three you put in, even more if you hold them past maturity. Yes, there are many ways of saving money. But today, while you're thinking about it, join the 8 million other Americans who find it easier to save through the automatic payroll savings plan. This message is brought to you as a public service. And now, in an isolated cabin near Gold Creek, an outlaw called Duke Gurney is talking to a mine clerk named Bert Heflin. Well, did you find out when that gold shipment is leaving? Yeah, Friday morning. And I also found out something else. Old man Woodruff is sending a letter to the Northwest Mounted in Dawson, asking for a Mountie to guard the shipment. Oh, he is, huh? That's right. And I'm afraid it may spoil our plans for the holdup. Maybe and maybe not. I've got an idea how we can take care of that Mountie and pull off this job even easier than we figured. Yes, Duke Gurney has a clever scheme to outwit the Northwest Mounted and seize a valuable gold shipment, which means that Sergeant Preston will have to think and act fast when he comes up against this daring and ruthless outlaw. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Thank you.